And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, oh, you're clapping already. You might want to wait a second. Uh, good morning. I'm Greta Klaus. I'm the children's ministry leader here at Peace, and we are so glad that you're here worshiping with us this morning, either online or in person here. Oh, oh, good morning. All right, so this here is Corny and Bessie, <clears throat> and we are here this morning to tell you all about our Barnyard Blast Vacation Bible School that's going to happen right here in June. Yeah. They're really excited. That's right. It's a barn theme this summer, and we'll be learning all about how we can plant God's love. Now, before we go any further, let's check out all of the fun that we had last summer at VBS. When life feels dark. We had a stellar time last year, but get ready because I'm about to make you laugh until the cows come home. <laughs> so here's the joke. Why shouldn't you tell a secret on a farm? Why? 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 Oh, why shouldn't you tell a secret on a farm? Because the potatoes have eyes and the corn has ears. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Okay. All right. Plus, it's no secret that we are going to have an amazing week of VBS from June 17th to the 21st from 9 a.m. to noon. Now, registration opens on May 1st. So this week through Peace's website, we are capping our numbers at 225 kiddos this year, and it will fill up. So make sure to register on May 1st. Ages three and a half through fifth grade can attend. Okay, now Bessie, tell the people this morning what a farmer talks about when she's out milking the cows. Utter nonsense. That's right, but this is a no-nonsense fact. We need volunteers to make VBS happen, and I'm so glad that you are utterly excited uh. Uh, about helping. 
You get to pick what job you'd like to help out with for the week, and anyone from sixth grade and up can volunteer. Okay, stick with me, folks, and this might be corny, but I think all of you are... Amazing. Oh, here are two more ways that you can help. First of all, be on the lookout for some take-home projects in the coming weeks. These are very easy projects that you can help at home and just bring back. The second way is that we are excited, again, to partner with the Hardy Center in Columbus. 40 kids from the Hardy Center will be bused over to Peace in order to attend our VBS. These uh, kiddos aren't able to pay the $40 registration fee. So if you would like to sponsor one of these 40 kiddos, there are flyers on the table out in the narthex by the barn display with more information on how you can do that. Look, we cannot wait for VBS where we will get to plant God's love. All right, I'm gonna close with one last farm joke. Are you ready? Okay, here we go, Corny. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? No, silly. Cows go. Moo. <laughs> All right, come and be a part of the fun this summer. It'll, It'll be, be a, a blast. blast. And now check out some more ways that you can stay connected. Good morning. I'm Amy Jo Donahue, a member here at Peace. Here are some ways to stay connected. Today is Confirmation Sunday. Congratulations for our students who are affirming their baptism today during our 10.30 a.m. worship. Confirmation isn't the end of their journey, but a new beginning as they explore their faith. They have learned that God's love for them is unconditional. Peace Family Ministry is hosting another important conversations class tonight, April 28th at 5 p.m. Join us for class to learn why kids behave the way they do, what they're trying to tell us, and how we as parents can help. You'll walk away from this class knowing you are not in this alone. Please reach out to Greta Klaus if you are interested in attending but have not yet registered. Registration for this summer's VBS opens this Wednesday, May 1st. We are going to have a barnyard blast. All children ages three and a half years old through completed fifth grade can attend. We will need volunteers to help make the week an amazing success. Completed sixth grade through adults can volunteer. Visit our website to register. For questions or more information, please contact Greta Klaus. To support PEACE's ongoing outreach ministries, remember these ways to give. You can donate online at peacegehanna.org. You can text PLCG to 73256. You can drop donations in our offering basket any Sunday during worship, or you can mail in your donation. You can learn more about our community, including upcoming events, groups, and classes at peacegehanna.org, or follow us at Peace Gehanna. You can also stay connected by signing up for our weekly newsletters and prayer line by visiting our website. We are glad you are with us today. We are Peace Lutheran Church, our mission to love God, neighbor, and self.
I invite you all to stand as we join together in our call to worship. Hope in Christ, hear the truth, the good news of our salvation. Live in Christ, we are marked by the Holy Spirit. Live like Christ. Live to the glory of Christ. Sometimes it's just good to keep everyone on their toes, don't you think?
Just checking. <laughs> we'll continue our service as found on page 98. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
before we get to the next part in our service, just wanted to let you know that this was our choir's last Sunday officially singing before the summer, so can we thank them for their work? Thank you. Uh, Throughout the summer, though, uh, Q has decided we're going to do easy choir uh, once or twice a month, and you can see announcements about that. So if you want to join the choir but can't do the Wednesday rehearsals, this is a great time to do that. You just show up at 8 a.m. Sunday, learn a simple two-part piece, and come and sing. So uh, if you want to be part of summer easy choir, we encourage you to do so. But now we get to do a baptism, which... Miles is ready for. Look at him doing circles over here. So we have a double baptism. Uh, so would the baptism family come forward and uh, we will get ready for that. <laughs> All right, Max, Miles, family. The exit door is right there, but it's not the door for you yet. <laughs> it's tempting, I know. Come on up, guys. If you guys want to come right up here. Perfect. Well done. Man, you guys look spiffy today, don't you? I know they're crunchy clothes, which aren't always the most comfortable, but it's just like an hour. You can do it. All right. So in baptism, we just need two things. We need God's promise, God's word, and then we need water. Now, water to us can seem pretty normal and plain, but it plays an important part in God's story from the very beginning. Back in Genesis, it was out of the waters of chaos that God creates everything. And then in the Exodus story, it's the waters of the sea that are parted, and then the Hebrew people walk through those waters out into freedom from slavery. And then in the New Testament, there's the story of Jesus' baptism, where he goes to the water of the River Jordan. And in that story, this voice of God comes from the heavens and says, this is my son who I love, with whom I am well pleased. And we believe God says the same thing to both of you this morning. You are my sons, my children who I love, with you I am well pleased. And we baptize people of all ages in the Lutheran church because we believe it's about God's promise coming to us before we can ever say yes to God. And so we ask when we're baptizing people who are younger, parents and sponsors, to make some promises for them. And so we ask you, will you promise to love and walk alongside your children, your sponsees? Will you promise to love and support them, to raise them in a community of faith, and to show them the love of Christ in all that you say and do? If so, say, we will. Awesome. People of peace, we don't do baptism in private whenever we can. We do this as a community. And so I ask you, representing the people of God that will meet Max and Miles wherever their life's journey takes them, will you love and support them? Will you walk alongside them and show them the love of Christ and all that you say and do? If so, say, we will. We will. And now let us confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin, of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, died and, and was buried. buried. He, he descended, descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right. Max, as the big brother that you are, you get to come and be baptized first. And so... You excited for this? Yeah? All right, it's, it's not cold, but it's not, you can touch it, it's okay. There you are. Kinda. It's kinda, yeah. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And here you can take this and wipe your head, and then you'll notice, if you wanna turn back this way, You'll notice that this is oil. Oil has been used throughout thousands of years as a way of anointing and blessing kings and people who are important 
And God says you are important and says you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And light also is a very important symbol in the church. Notice this candle here. Do you know what it's called? The Christ candle. And we think that represents the light of Christ that shines among us. And so now that light has gone out. And I think you're old enough probably to hold this for a minute. And we say, may your light so shine before others that they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. It's probably best to hold it upright so it doesn't drip. But there you go. You want to come stand over here? And then we'll let Pastor Tony baptize Miles over here. But here we go. Just give a little room. All right, Miles, are you ready? If so, roar. Oh, that's all right. Come. You want to see what's going on over here? All right, let's do it. We got our little shuffle here. Some water. You want to feel the water? This is the water that you're going to be baptized with in just one second. So it is my joy to baptize you, Miles, in the name of the Father. Get it everywhere, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, there you go. As Pastor Doug said, oil is another important image that you're gonna run away from me before you get it. That's okay, I can come to you. The Holy Spirit comes to you too. And so we say that you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, amen. That's oil in there, isn't that cool? And then light, the other important image, it's the light of Christ that shines through your life. So we say, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. I think maybe yes, maybe yes. All right. Now, kids, do you want to come and walk with Pastor Doug and I for just a minute? Not a far walk, just a little walk. Mom and Dad can come too if they want. Just Just to come right over here. And what I'm going to ask is for all of these people to wave at you and say, hi, Max and Miles. Yeah, and you want to look over at these people and say, hi, Max and Miles. They are your new family, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Some of them are a little weird. Some of them wear crunchy clothes like you, some of them don't, but they're all part of this family, loving and supporting you. So let's welcome them into this family of Christ with a round of applause. Woo! Um, And now, let us share the peace of Christ, and so may the peace of our Lord be with you always. Let's share a sign of peace. Yeah, I can grant, you can blow. So we're continuing this sermon series called Walk the Walk, where we're going through the book of Ephesians. Today we're to Ephesians chapter 4, but I want to start today with a word that I've been struggling with lately. It is this word, help. Help. Now it sounds like a strange word to be struggling with, but it's one that I've just started wrestling with. When, when I ask, how can I help, or how can we help, I, It's been falling flat for me lately, and I've been wrestling with it. Maybe it's because I'm now 55 years old, I'm becoming older and wiser. As a matter of fact, uh, a couple weeks ago, my dear friend and colleague, Tony Katko's son, Oliver, was out in front of our office, and we have this little dividing wall, and he had snuck up and was hiding behind the dividing wall. And I said, from my office, I think there is an Oliver behind the wall. And he turns, and he looks out, and he goes, how did you know? And I said, because I am an old, wise pastor. (laughs) And he scratched his head, and he did this, 
And he went, you're not that wise. <laughs> now the other two components were dead on, but wise, no. But here's why I'm wrestling with this word help, because sometimes it feels, and, and, and when it's used in a healthy, helpful sense, it sure is a word that still carries some weight and is a helpful word. But sometimes it feels like a word that we throw out as a way of trying to distance ourselves from whatever situation presents itself. How can I help? In other words, it's, it's a little bit like, I'm, I'm a little awkward in this situation right now and I'd like to get out of it, so how can I fix it? Right? I mean, sometimes it also feels like, okay, I'm in a position to reach down and lift you up, and it's not an equalitarian sort of word. Or sometimes where I've been recently is I, I sit with so many of you during times of your life that you'd rather not be in. And I'll ask that, how can I help? Knowing the answer already before I've even asked the question. The answer is, no, you can't, you can't do anything. Like if you're going through a health crisis, I, how can I help? I can't fix it. You're going through a situation in your life that you'd rather not be going through, I can't solve it. You're asking questions that I can't answer. So how can I help? Maybe you've asked that question too. It's, and sometimes it just feels like it falls flat. And I think that's why this reading today from Paul I entered into it with a fresh perspective because I think Paul's going beyond the word help here. He's getting into something way more profound. And I love, this might be my favorite reading in all of Ephesians. He says, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And I love this verse. With all humility and gentleness, with patience. Listen to this. Bearing with one another in love. Making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Now listen to this part. And I want you to count the number of times that you hear the word one. You ready? There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith. One baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. How many times? You get it? Paul, seven. Yeah, there's seven times there, Max. Seven times that Paul says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, even though we had two today. He, he, he. Do you know what the number seven means in biblical writing? Whole, complete. It's seven days of creation. Every, every time you see seven, it means complete. It, it, it's, it's communal in a sense. Like it, the De Deuteronomy, the, the Jewish uh, slogan called the Shema. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. It's, a, it's this number of completeness. Everything comes together in it. It's all tied together. And I think this goes at, at my question of well, how do we actually be helpful with, with one another? So let me introduce to you the aspen trees. When Tony and I did this Bible study with the Bible Project, the leader of the study talked about the aspen trees. And some of you may know this, some of you may not. I've had the pleasure of skiing in aspen, thanks to some of our members. But uh, my favorite part of aspen are the trees. And all throughout Colorado, you see these aspen trees. And here's the fascinating thing about them. The entire grove, and these could be miles and miles long, are all connected underground by one root ball. 
So there's one root ball under the ground where all of the roots have spread out, forming these trees. Now, the interesting thing is the trees aren't identical to one another, but they're all, all their um, uh, makeup is the same because it all comes from one root ball. Now, the scientists have studied some of these groves and have found one of the oldest root balls is 80,000 years old. Picture that, this beautiful image where no two trees are identical, but they're all made up of the same stuff. So that made me think, because Paul's words here are communal. We're all connected. We're not the same, but we're all connected. And so it made me think last week, I know some of you participated in Peace Serves. And if you're not familiar with what that is, visiting with us today, Peace Serves is a day where once a year we go and we serve either right here in our congregation or we go outside and serve some of our local organizations. And we, we send out, I think we had 175 people we sent out last week. And some of you were a part of that. And as I like to do, I'll, I'll be working for a while, but then I've noticed the past couple years, I like to just step back and watch all of you work. <laughs> but I do that for a couple reasons. One, because, yeah, sometimes I'm lazy. But two, because there's something more profound in stopping for a minute and watching what everyone's doing. This time I was just working on the gardens here and just would observe some of you from time to time and doing your weeding or mulching or whatever it was that you were doing and realizing there's something more profound happening than serving. There's something more profound happening than helping. It's something communal where you're connecting with one another in service. It's like this recognition that we all come from the same root ball. <laughs> Mother Teresa once diagnosed the world's ills by saying that we have just forgotten that we all belong to one another. We have just forgotten that we all belong to one another. After the service, you're going to uh, hopefully, assuming we printed these out, you're, if you haven't already, you're going to be handed a piece of paper. Now, I can't say what's on that piece of paper because we're online right now, and it involves trying to help someone in a country that we can't name. And I was talking with one of the leaders of the organization that helps people out of horrible situations where they live and tries to do it all legally and above ground, but, uh, but I said, wow, how is it that you and your church started a ministry like this? And they said that we believe in the proverb, Proverbs 17, verse 17, that says this, a friend loves at all times and kinsfolk are born to share adversity. I don't know if I'd ever heard this proverb till he told it. And now I've written it in, in, on the wall in my office. A friend loves at all times and kinsfolk are born to share adversity. And it's the motivating verse of an entire organization now that is changing families' lives. So make sure to pick up one of those pieces of paper on your way out. Gregory Boyle, a, uh, he's the founder of Homeboy Industries. I've quoted him many times before. If you haven't checked out one of his books, highly recommend him. He's in Los Angeles. He works with gang members, and he walks beside them. They, they share life together. It's more than just helping. It's sharing in adversity, and he has a quote that says this, kinship is not serving the other, but being one with the other. Jesus was not a man for others. He was one with them. There's a world of difference in that. I mean, I love that. If the cross tells us anything, it, it's that Jesus entered into this world and is among it, is in it with us, hanging from the cross saying, as you can see, I've been there. 
Whatever your struggles are, I know what it is, and I, I'm with you in it. You too, in their great song, One, says we're one, but we're not the same. We get to carry each other, carry each other, one. I think Jewish people understand this maybe better than, than anyone. They have this great tradition that when there's a funeral and after the funeral, the family comes together and they'll share a meal like so many of us do, but they call it sitting Sheva. You've probably heard of this, where if a family member wants to talk, then the Whoever gathers together, they'll talk. If a family wants to just sit in silence, then the community sits together in silence. I just picture that, listening to like a grandfather clock. In it together, carrying one another. It's way more profound than help. Let me tell you one of my favorite images from serving. This was several years ago. Uh, our own Jim Slates, right up here, yeah? Jim singing in the choir today. He, he, several of us used to go to First English and serve a meal. And so we go to help the people in uh, urban Columbus by serving this meal. Now, we would all go to help except for Jim, who would go to sit. We're there helping, working. Jim comes and sits. Now at first you think, well this is a little irritating, watching us do all the work, until you realize that he's sitting with the people that we came to serve. All of us are there to help. Jim's there to be. It's like Jim, you can almost picture him at the end of the evening looking at the people that he's just gotten to know and share about an hour of life with and says to them, hey, I just want you to know we're all one root ball. So at our next service, we're gonna have confirmation for what, 11? Is that what we said, 11? 11 of our students. And these students, I, I'm so proud of them because they've actually really thought a lot about this and they they want to be a part of this community. And so we're going we're gonna to have the opportunity at our next service to say, do you want to be a part of a community that goes beyond helping? Do you want to be a part of a community that is communal with each other, that feels like perhaps there are times where all we can do is be one with one another? Do you want to be a part of this? And I'm going to look them in the eyes and I'm going to say this, root ball. So I'll close today with their video of why this is important. Hi, my name is Finn and I'm being confirmed today. My hobbies are swimming, football, and hanging out with my family. I also like to cook and I really just like all sports. My name is Cameron Carr. I'm an athlete, sister, friend, and a beloved child of God. I'm Brandon Sams, a kid who is kind, funny, smart, athletic, a bowler, guitarist, musician, lucky, fortunate, grateful, and most importantly, a child of God. My name is Ashton Steele, and I like to think of myself as a very outgoing, hardworking, and busy person. Um, I do play a lot of sports. I do get involved in a lot of activities. Jack Sammons. <clears throat> One thing I enjoy doing is hanging out with my friends and family. I'm Julia Young, a student, daughter, musician, artist, good friend, and lastly, a child of God. I'm a son, a musician, an athlete, a brother, a grandson, and most importantly, a child of God. My name is Lauren LaCrosse. I am a daughter, a niece, a granddaughter, a sister, an athlete, and a child of God. I am most importantly a child of God, but I am also an athlete, student, brother, son, and a great friend. I'm Owen Lang. I'm a son, a grandson, a nephew, a brother, a cousin, a friend, 
an athlete and a huge Ohio State fan, and I'm proud to be confirming my faith. In my journey of faith, Jesus holds a profound significance. He serves as my influencer, guiding me with his wisdom and love. I see myself as one of God's sons, cherished by him as a father cherishes his children. Jesus to me is the son of God, my savior and a safe place for me. I mean a lot to him because he died on the cross for our sins. Jesus is the son of God and also our father. He died for our sins so we could go to heaven and was crucified so we can live a life. And I'm told to spread his words and spread Christianity. To me, Jesus is a protector and he always loves us and he's there for us whenever we need him. Jesus to me is another friend. He is someone I can talk to knowing he will listen. I know I mean a lot to Jesus because he died for my sins. To me, Jesus is somebody that holds you accountable and is there for you to resort to him when you're at your low points in life. I think what Jesus means to me is a person that provides hope and security for anyone that really needs help in any situation. Um, he's kind of like a safe space to me. To me, Jesus is a major part of my life. Jesus is a person who, even though I cannot see him, I always know he's there for me. What I mean to Jesus is I'm a light to everyone around me. I try to be a light at VBS, on student missions, and in my everyday life. I want the younger kids to know that the church is a safe place where you can grow closer to Jesus, and I try spreading happiness to the elderly people on the mission trips and across our community. He means peace, love, kindness, all the good things in life. My favorite Bible verse is Romans 8.18. The verse states, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be re revealed to us. In simpler words, it means the pain you are going through does not compare to the joy that is about to come. This is my favorite verse because whenever I'm going through sufferings, I know that it will eventually get better and it is all a part of God's plan. It's Matthew 6:34. So don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Tomorrow will have its own worries. I love this Bible verse because it allows me to understand that if you worry too much about the future, you can't fully live in the present. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. In that it says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up, they will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. I think that means a lot to me because it shows that if you put your trust in God, He'll always help you and He can give you the strength that you need to finish anything. Through the confirmation process, I've gleaned valuable lessons and I've come to understand that everyone is human, capable of making mistakes, yet forgiveness is attainable. During my confirmation experience, I have learned about the sacraments we recognize as a Lutheran church, which is baptism and communion. I've learned about other religions, and I even got to go to a Jewish synagogue during one of my experiences. For courses and services, I have learned to always help others when you can, whether it be providing community in that church, doing dishes at home, or helping the hungry or needy. One meaningful thing to me is the fact that I'm able to experience the everlasting love and relationship with Jesus. I've really learned about more about myself through these classes and through catechism alone. Um, I've learned a lot about other people and I've learned a lot about Jesus. And I think that these classes really helped me grow a different type of connection with God that I never did have before. So it really taught me how to read the Bible. And I really hope to um, hold on to that because um, when we are in the classes, I think that it's great with the fact that we um, kind of break down scriptures and kind of go through them and it helps me understand um, a lot more about catechism, Christianity, being a Lutheran. Some things that I have learned during my confirmation is the importance of giving back to community and seeing that faith looks different for everyone. I would like to learn more about some events that happened during the New Testament. Things that have been meaningful for me is praying to God, sharing this confirmation experience with my family, and learning more about Peace Lutheran Church.
in the future, um, I want to continue going to church when I can, as well as reminding myself to connect with God. One struggle I have is that I was raised to believe these things about God and faith, and it makes me forget to be honest with myself on how I feel about my faith. In the future, I would like to keep a strong relationship with God by doing more things for the church, praying more, and keep reminding myself that God is always with me. I would like to go to church, pray, and do a lot more opportunities like this, like having a funny youth group, or going to more, more churches and learning about things. And most importantly, learning about God and Jesus and what they did for our world. Let's pray. God, we lift up in prayer all of these young people we just heard from, affirming their baptisms later on. We thank you for their hearts, for their honesty, and for their lives, which are valuable parts of this community. We also lift up Max and Miles, give thanks for their baptism. May all of these important faith milestones remind the rest of us of important parts in our own journey. Especially on days like today, you show us that we never walk this path alone. And a prayer of blessing later on at the next service we'll offer for our confirmation students, but it's a good prayer of blessing for all of us. And so we pray, God, bless all of us on our journey with Jesus. Be with us in times of struggle and doubt. Give us confidence that you will always be present because our lives matter to you now and forever. Amen. One of the ways that Jesus shows us his presence is in this meal. And so we remember that it was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and poured it out for all to drink, saying, this cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And he taught us the prayer that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We want you all to know, especially if you are uh, new to this community, that everyone is welcome to come to this table. Uh, we will hand you the wafer, the body of Christ, dip that into the cup, the blood of Christ, and eat both of those together. Uh, the table in the center has some gluten-free wafers or cups with grape juice if you are in need of either of those, and a plate there for your offerings. If you've come prepared to give in that way, or if you give online like so many of us do, we thank you for those gifts. They are what make it possible to do everything we do here at Peace. At this point, we'll invite our community servers to come on forward. We'll commune them and then spread out this meal to the rest of you.
invite you to stand. We have been fed with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be people filled with his grace. Amen. God, we offer these gifts back to you and ask that they may be blessed and used for the good of your kingdom. Amen.
all you who seek Jesus Christ, hear the good news. You are loved according to the richness of God's grace. Let us live like Christ, walk the walk, and go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.